Hey guys, it's Shaylin and I'm here today with another video. So today I'm doing a book recs video and I'm going to be recommending some sapphic books because I'm yay, <laughs> but also because it's pride and I just wanted to share some of the great sapphic lit that I've been reading lately. I was originally gonna do a more comprehensive like queer book recs video, but it was just so many books to pull together. I've just been reading a lot of sapphic lit lately, like that's one thing that I've been like really focused on in my reading. When I was a kid, when I was reading YA, there was like barely any sapphic YA available, but the very few sapphic books that there were, I like really wanted to read them for unexplained reasons. I wonder why. I never let myself because I thought that if people saw me reading those books they would think that I was a lesbian. How'd that turn out for you 15 year old Shaylin? First of all, probably everyone thought that. Second of all, they were correct. Should have just read the gay books anyways. A couple years ago, you know, I was like very fully accepting of myself and Yet I still had this like weird thing in my mind where I barely ever read any sapphic lit and part of me was like, well the point of reading is to like expand your horizons, you don't read just to like see your own life experiences reflected back at you. I had gone my whole life not really ever letting myself read books that I could relate to on that level. And so that's something that I've been like actively really focused on in my reading is just trying to read all the sapphic lit that I can, eventually there can be a part two. Although it is my life goal to read all of the sapphic lit possible, I'm merely one simple gay. I cannot read everything. I have left a Google Doc in the description with all of the books listed and I will continue adding to it as I read more sapphic lit so it probably has more books than are even mentioned in the video because I'm filming this in like April. I really wanted to go for books that have significant canon sapphic characters or storylines. I hate it when you're trying to find like a sapphic book or like, find a list and then eight out of the ten are like these two women once made eye contact from across a field and experienced a vague, unexplained sense of longing and truth and then went back home to their husbands and it's like, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for like canon, canon lesbians, okay? Not this, if you really squint, maybe they could be gay. So there's only one book in here that's like more of a vibes book. I wanted to start with one of my favorite authors, Kaming Chang. Um, if you're a lesbian and you haven't read Kaming Chang, drop everything and run to the bookstore. Her novel Bestiary follows the protagonist's daughter who one day wakes up and finds that she has grown a tiger tail and learns that every woman in her family is the embodiment of a myth and at the same time she's falling in love with a girl in her class named Ben and it's such a strange mythic story and uh, Kaming Chang also has a short story collection out called Gods of Want. One of my favorite short story collections it feels very much in the same world of Bestiary where it's very mythic and surreal and bizarre. Her writing style is so funky and electric. It, she has one of the most original writing styles I've ever read. Just on the sentence level, her work is very like joyous and exciting. In her work, being a lesbian is the norm. You kind of get to experience this very surreal, strange world while at the same time you feel normalized in a way that you don't feel in real life. Next up, a recent fave of mine, I recommend All This Could Be Different by Sarah Thanka Matthews. This was one of my favorite books that I read last year. This book is utter perfection. I say that it is the perfect millennial buildings roman. This book follows the protagonist Sneha. She graduates university into a recession, but she gets a fancy job as a consultant and moves to Milwaukee where she doesn't know anyone, but she decides that it's time to start dating women. And we follow all these facets of her life, work, friends, mental health, family, kind of circling around this relationship that she has with the dancer that she becomes quite intrigued by. And it's so well written. There are sentences from this book that I literally still think about. Tagna is just so interesting. Her voice is so immersive. I, I can't recommend this one enough. It's one of those books where it's like, tackles so many topics, but doesn't really have a plot, but is constantly so engaging. Next up, I recommend The Best Bad Things by Katrina Carrasco. It's set in, I think, the 1890s in the PNW, and we follow the protagonist. Alma who works for an all-women's PI agency and she's investigating I think some opium money that had gone missing and the plot is super twisty, super turny. She is goes undercover as a man named Jack. Alma is my gender fluid bisexual icon. She is living her best by life. She's gender fluid coded as hell. Though the book is historical fiction, there's never any like violence towards queer people. The writing style is so unique and really like punchy and electric. Then I recommend 
Big Swiss by Jim Began. This was a recent find. I just read this, but I'm very obsessed with it. And I believe it's already being adapted to a like a limited series that's coming out later this year. This book follows Greta. She is a transcriber for a sex therapist and she becomes obsessed with one of the patients. And when she recognizes her voice, when they have a chance encounter out in public, they begin a affair. So messy. It's funny, but in like an, oh no, not like a ha ha kind of way. It's truly watching a gay train wreck and like you cannot look away. Then I recommend Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo. You've probably heard of this because it like won the man booker. Uh, it's also like literally the most well-written book I've ever read in my life. This book just follows primarily a series of different black women in the UK. And so there's a bunch of different storylines and they all interlink. It's fantastic. Every single storyline is incredibly well written and even though you only get like 40 to 60 pages with each character, each one of the stories in this book feels more like full and complete and rich than most like full 400 page novels. It honestly has like the best character writing that I think I have ever read. Then I recommend Pizza Girl by Jean Kung Fraser. This book follows a 18 year old pregnant pizza delivery girl who lives with her mom and her boyfriend. She ends up becoming obsessed with a woman that she starts delivering pizzas to and has a little bit of a gay awakening. If you've ever been reading an Otessa Moshvig novel and thought, gee, wish this were more gay, then this is the book for you. It has that same sardonic grittiness as I think Moshvig's work, but it's also not as off-putting. It's like a bit lighter, but it has that kind of similar quality where it's like so specifically realistic it becomes almost surreal. I really enjoyed this. It was quite a fun quick read. Then I recommend Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. This book follows three characters. The main character Reese is a trans woman whose ex since detransitioned and is now dating his boss and she's pregnant. He like calls up Reese and is like, hey you know how you always wanted to be a mom? Thoughts on co-parenting this baby with me. When I saw the concept for this book I was like, Straight people are gonna see this and go, that never happens, but no, it does. If someone that I know told me that that happened to them in real life, I'd be like, yeah. This is the book for you if you want a book that rather than just being like, yeah, they're gay and moving on, yeah, they're trans and moving on, it goes into all the thoughts, feelings, philosophy, emotions on gender, transness, and queerness. It's also all wrapped up in this just like very, fun, complicated web of uh, interpersonal relationships. Then I recommend Butter Honey Pig Bread by Francesca Equiasi. I will say I read this a while ago and my memory of it isn't great. This book follows a family of Nigerian women, two daughters and a mother, I believe, and there's kind of this circling around trauma that the girls endured as children, but then we also follow them as adults. One of the two daughters is gay. She gets up to a bunch of gay shenanigans. It's one of those books where the characters can make mistakes and act a bit messy, but it just feels really real and human and sensitive and the writing is very multi-sensory. Then I recommend Violets by Kyung Suk Shin. This book follows the protagonist who, as a young child, lives in the Korean countryside and when she's around eight, one day she and her best friend share a kiss and she's like, oh my god, I know love, this is fantastic. And then after this, her best friend completely rejects her and just completely turns her back on her. We cut to like decades later, she moves to Seoul. She does the gayest thing I've ever heard of in my life, which is get a job at a flower shop, befriend the cute girl who works at the flower shop and then immediately move in with her. This book starts off very gentle and becomes increasingly more turbulent and like psychologically violent as the main character kind of begins to spiral. These feelings that she, she's repressed start to unearth. So it's a very intense psychological story, but at the same time, quite like gentle as well. Then I recommend Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. This book follows two storylines, Miriam Graves, who is an aspiring pilot in, I don't know, maybe like the 1930s. They also followed a child pop star kind of media darling who is now playing her in a film. This was a sleeper find, you know, not tagged on Goodreads as LGBT, but I'm like halfway through this book and Miriam, the aspiring pilot, is married to a man and I'm like, queen, you're bisexual as I've ever seen. If you don't end up doing at least a little bit of gay shit in this book, Missed opportunity? Well, guess you turned out to be right. Didn't expect this to end up being sapphic, but it was. And also just a great book, really richly detailed with so much historical detail, but like very engagingly written and these two interweaving storylines that are so different, but work together so cohesively. Then I recommend Matrix by Lauren Groff. This book follows Marie, who is thwarted from court in, I think, 10th century France and ends up being sent to a nunnery 
and she gets there and it's a total disaster and she's like I'm gonna fix up this nunnery and we're gonna be the best nuns that you've ever seen and by that I mean I'm gonna have sex with a bunch of them. I kid you not that is the plot. A bunch of really wild stuff happens. Laura Groff has been one of my favorite authors for a long time. I love her prose style. It's so rich, gorgeous, the way she phrases things. She'd been an influence of mine for a long time. Her work always been pretty hetero. She releases this book and I was like, Lauren, you are giving the gays everything they want with this one. Dare I say it is my favorite Lauren Groff book? Not just because it's gay, also just because it's a really fun story and it's like so gorgeously written. Then I recommend Sirens and Muses by Antonia Angres. This book follows three art students and an established artist as they figure out interpersonal relationships and establishing yourself as an artist and reckoning with art versus commerce and there's like a little bisexual love triangle happening among these three art students. Then I recommend What We Do in the Dark by Michelle Hart. This book follows Mallory who is a college freshman and she begins having an affair with a professor at her university. This book is so delicately written. The prose floats by so effortlessly, very sparse, but it kind of knows exactly where to press in order to get the most emotion out of this situation without feeling melodramatic. It's like very subtle and knows exactly where to press. I found it very impactful, very well written, very quick read. Then I recommend You Exist Too Much by Zaina Arafat. We follow the unnamed main character who is a bisexual Palestinian American young woman and we follow a bunch of different ro romantic relationships she's had in a kind of very non-linear way but then her relationship with her mother is really at the core of it and in one of the timelines she is being treated for a love addiction. It's very non-linear but it's so easy to read. It has this like very easygoing meandery quality to it where you kind of just like float along through this story and it's very intimately told by the end. You feel like you've gotten so close to this narrator. Then I recommend Notes of a Crocodile by Q Mao Jin. This is set in a university in the 1980s in Taipei. The protagonist falls in with a group of kind of like queer misfits and finds herself in love with a slightly older student and she kind of just can't escape her attraction to her and it's very quotable. It talks a lot about queer rights in Taiwan at the time. If you want to read kind of a cult classic piece of translated queer lit, definitely check it out. Then I recommend Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. This is about a gay ghost. That's all you need to know. We follow Blanca who died in Mallorca and still lives there as a ghost. And at the time, I chop in, I think. One of a composer shows up with his wife. I think it's his wife. Are they married? George Sands and their children because they show up because he's dying of consumption and Blanca immediately falls in love with George. If you love queer ghost yearning in a book that's like very deliciously written, also had this kind of cheeky sense to it because the ghost is kind of like messing pe with people and like going into different people's minds. Um, it's a very unique book. Then I recommend When We Lost Our Heads by Heather O'Neill. Heather O'Neill, one of my favorite authors, has been one of my favorite authors for a long time. She writes in this kind of bizarre, uncanny valley, satirical, offbeat kind of reality. This book follows two young girls who are very different but both very brilliant in their own way. They meet as young girls, they form a very deep bond, and they get split apart. They follow them on their own journeys, but they're continually pulled back towards each other. There's this like magnetism between them. I have loved Heather O'Neill's work for a long time. Similarly to when I read Matrix, I was like, Heather, lesbian era? <laughs> because this is again, giving the gays all that they want. I love it when one of my favorite authors, known for their hetero work, then just drops like a super queer book, and it's like, you saw what I wanted because that's what this was it. Then I recommend Crimson by Nivea Cornelison. This follows five friends in Greenland and I think all or almost all of them are queer and we just kind of follow their web of relationships told from one perspective at a time. It has this kind of like lyrical emotional quality. Then I recommend The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Ni Vo, um, as well as the following books in this entire series, the Singing Hills series. There's not as much fantasy on this list as, I, as I'd like. I'm currently on a quest to read as much sci-fi fantasy as I can find, but this is, I think, a great pick, especially if a big long fantasy book seems a bit intimidating. These are just novellas. We follow a cleric who basically is traveling around 
telling stories. This character is like so me coded. I've never read a character I relate to more in my life than the cleric from the Singing Hills series because basically their whole thing is that they just wander around. When they meet people they're like, shall I tell you a story about lesbians? And that's their whole deal. I'm like, wow, if, if it ain't me. I personally enjoy the frame but the stories themselves are all very like mythic and sapphic and they're novellas so they're super quick reads. Then I recommend Daughters of the Deer by Danielle. Daniel. So this book follows Marie, who is an Algonquin woman in I think the 17th century. When her husband dies, she ends up kind of getting convinced to marry a French fur trader. Then we later on follow her daughter, who is in love with another girl. And of course, the like French people are like, oh, how dare you be gay? That's the worst thing I've ever heard of in my life, even though we literally colonized this entire continent. This is a very quick read. My mom really enjoyed it. Side note. We'll say this is not a happy ending for the gays. Then I recommend Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. This is one of the most unique books I've ever read. We follow three characters, an alien who lives in a spaceship disguised as a donut shop, a violin teacher who made a deal with a demon and has to deliver the souls of seven violin prodigies to hell to escape damnation, and a violin prodigy who has run away from home because her parents are super transphobic. There's so much going on. It's so bizarre. There's a sapphic romance between the violin teacher and the alien. Very unique, kind of like a cozy sci-fi. Then I recommend What We All Long For by Dion Brand. This book follows four young people in Toronto and it's kind of just a very slice of life and one of them is a lesbian. Kind of just like quietly lyrical and subtle but also like quite beautifully written. Then I recommend Cherry Beach by Laura McPhee Brown. It follows two girls from Australia, one of whom her boyfriend has just died because he committed suicide and so they move to Toronto together and the protagonist is like in love with her best friend but is like I can't act on this because a she's straight and two her boyfriend just committed suicide. It's like a, I'm wandering around the city, I'm sad, I'm gay, I don't know what to do with my feelings kind of vibes. It's pretty sad this one. Also very relatable. The one YA book on this list, We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. The only YA book on this list because like I said I never read sapphic YA because I thought that if I did people would think I was a lesbian. Hilarious. I honestly highly doubt the peers who had enough social capital to bully me for being gay would have even known that niche YA titles that I was reading in the library at lunch were about lesbians anyways. I don't think that that really was my uh, biggest problem, nor do I think it was the biggest tell. This book follows a girl who's spending the winter break in her university dorm and she's completely alone there and so her ex-girlfriend comes to stay with her. It's super gentle, soft, nostalgic, melancholic. If you've ever been sad and gay in a university dorm, this will hit home for you. Then I recommend Sweet Days of Discipline by Fleur Gaggy. This is the one like vibes book, like it's not canonically sapphic but like it's- this book follows a girl in the 1950s at a Swiss boarding school. She becomes obsessed with a new girl who arrives at the school and is it canonically sapphic? No. Is that still the gayest thing of all time? Yes. Then I recommend This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amar El Motar. You've probably heard of this book, it's pretty well known. It is a sci-fi that follows two time agents on different sides of a time war and they start leaving each other messages and end up falling in love. It is the best concept I've ever heard of. Like that's the best concept for a love story of all time and the fact that it ended up being sapphic is like such a win for lesbians. Then I recommend After Sappho by Shelby Wynne Schwartz. I just read this and it's really a current favorite of mine. This book follows a bunch of different vignettes of a bunch of different historical feminist or and or lesbian figures. Some real, some of it is invented, all kind of weaving together in these little, in kind of like a pastiche of little vignettes through, I think it's maybe like late 1800s to early 1900s in Europe. So it's a very like specific period of time and it kind of just chronicles like feminism and lesbian rights in a very specific time and place, but I loved it. Every single little vignette is so rich. It honestly feels like a true like celebration of like sapphic love. Then I recommend Couplets by Maggie Milner. I just read this one told in verse. So it's a very quick read. We follow a woman who is in a relationship with a long-term relationship with a man and then she's like whoop I'm queer and I'm gonna date a woman now. Thoughts on that and um it's messy. 
that's fun to read about. I love it when the gays are messy in the books I'm reading. Then I recommend Hijab Butch Blues by Lamia H. This is a memoir. This book follows the author kind of reconciling with her Muslim identity and her identity as like a non-binary lesbian and what her process of coming out to herself and also to the people around her was like and how she found a queer community and how she found sense of her queer identity in her religious identity. And it's just a very vulnerable book. By the end you feel very close to the narrator and even if you don't read a bunch of memoir, because I don't, I think you could still really enjoy this. Then I recommend Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This is like a soft horror. I wouldn't say it's full on horror, but it's like a soft horror book. We follow a lesbian couple and one of them is a marine biologist. Her submarine goes missi missing when she's on a deep sea mission, but it, she ends up coming back weeks later than expected. But something about her is just not the same and it's about loving someone who has changed beyond the point that they are who they used to be, but in like a deep sea horror way. <laughs> it's rare that you get such a intimate, close, lived in portrait of like a lesbian relationship at the center of a book. And so um, I think that that's actually the standout. And then the like sprinkling of undersea horror just kind of I don't know, I, I'm terrified of the deep ocean. So this book really tapped into both my greatest love, lesbians, and my deepest fear. Then I recommend The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is set in, I think, 16th or 7th century Norway. All the men died um, because they went out in like a storm. I don't, it's been years since I read this book. They all died and so the town is like run by women and this man and his wife show up, show up and he's like, um, excusez-moi, no men? Clearly this is witchcraft and bad and uh, there's like a sapphic romance and it's very atmospheric and moody. Then I recommend Ayidi by Roxane Gay. This is another short story collection. The short stories in these books are so brief and they chronicle a bunch of different people, mostly in Haiti of or of the Haitian diaspora. The stories are so brief, so quick, some of them are gay. What's so special about this collection is that the stories, many of them are so short but you don't feel like you need more. Like, you get such a full picture of this moment of this person in such a brief period of time. Then I recommend All About Sarah by Pauline delabroy Allard. This book chronicles two women who are have their first queer relationship with each other and truly their vibe is, I realized I'm gay and there's nothing else left in my brain. Gay thoughts only, I've literally forgotten everything else. The first half is this very poetic, almost spiral as they're just like, losing their minds being gay for each other. There's like quite a plot twist halfway through the book, which I personally didn't really enjoy, but it was worth it for the first half, which was just them being like so unhingedly gay for each other. But some people might like the plot twist, so I'm including it here. Then I recommend With Teeth by Kristen Arnett. This is messy. This book follows a woman's troubled relationship with her son and her wife, later ex-wife. It's just so messy. Everyone is messy. This is a portrait of some unhealthy, unhinged people who all need therapy. Like, everyone in this book needs therapy so much. Everyone is so selfish and manipulative and unhinged and it is entertaining. Then I recommend The Lightness by Emily Temple. This book follows a girl who goes to a summer camp, a meditation summer camp for girls because of ties her father has to this place and she falls in with this culty group of girls who are trying to learn how to levitate. This book has it all. It has cult shit, it has beautiful writing, it has bisexuals being unhinged. I couldn't ask for more. And finally, I recommend Willa and Hesper by Amy Feltman. This book is so underrated. This book follows two characters, Willa and Hesper. Meet, fall in love, we follow their relationship, and then we follow the end of their relationship, and we follow how they heal by reconnecting to their own family heritage. Hesper goes to Georgia, the country, not the state. Willa connects with her Jewish heritage by going to Germany to do Holocaust research. Intimate, personal, kind of lived in book. It has this like soft nostalgic quality to it. I will also quickly shout out the book I'm currently reading, Scorched Grace by Margot Duahy. It is about a punk rock lesbian nun investigating arson, but I am really enjoying it. By the time this video goes up, I hope to have read even more sapphic lit, which I will include in the Google Doc linked below. I will say these are not all necessarily personal favorites. There are all books that I enjoyed, but you may remember me talking about some of these books in previous recent reads videos where I may have, you know, had critiques of some of them. These are not all necessarily my personal favorites, but they're all books that I think for the right person, that person will love it. And finally, a little tiny self promo. If you enjoy Sapphic Lit, I have some published short stories. Many of them have queer 
themes. All my published work fiction is linked in the description. These are the ones that have sapphic characters and storylines in them. I don't get like money or anything, they're all just in literary magazines, but if you're interested in reading some of my own gay work. For some reason you're watching this video because you're not like a subscriber of my channel and you just saw sapphic book recs and you were like, huh, I want some of those. I myself write gay shit, so check them out. <laughs> Alright guys, that's all for this video. I do hope to do a part two eventually because I have so many more gay books that I want to read. And to help me on that quest of becoming the all-knowing purveyor of sapphic literature, please leave your favorite sapphic book recs in the description because it's honestly all that I want to read right now. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Pride everyone. I hope that through this video you were able to find some gay books that spark joy for you and I'll see you in another video. Bye!